Hey folks, so this is a tattoo update. As you know, I qualified about, it must be about a year ago now, to be a tattooist. Um, I say qualified because I, I came through the beauty route, so I was trained in tattooing scalps um, for permanent makeup, scalp tattooing, and eyebrows and lip liners, stuff like that. And then I'm I was obviously a tattooist anyway, tattooing on my own body. Um, using hand poke techniques. Well, I've been experimenting with line drawing using an electric um, tattoo machine. So I won't say it's nearly as therapeutic or relaxing as um, hand poke, which, because hand poke, you really get very zen doing that. You can't rush it. It's a very slow process and it gives you I really like it when I'm watching TV you know if I'm watching a movie or something I can look up and it's not an issue um but you know the the peacock that I'm doing on my shin has taken probably about 6 hours so far and I'm probably going to spend another 6 hours on it so you know you can really appreciate the time difference there but of course I used a lot uh, an electric line machine for the outline and that really sped up the process because the hardest bit of um, hand poke is actually the outline in the way that I work. Um, not in the way everybody works. Some people just don't use an outline. They use a big fat magnum um, hand poke, which is very wide. And they just push the ink in really, really quickly as they go along. And that gives a very tribal look. But it's not what I do. Um, and I wouldn't want any tribal stuff on my person and it does hurt, I won't lie, that, that method is going to hurt. And I reckon it might hurt more than the electric, although I wouldn't swear to that. Um, so today I'm going to be doing, or later on this evening, um, a bit of live machine tattooing. I'm going to experiment with some single lines and a very small needle. And I'm going to be working up and down my probably I'll probably start with my thigh because it's quite it's, it's close up you know um later on I do want to do one on my boob um and because the skin there is quite stretched because I'm 61 I'm probably going to wear a bra that really pulls it tightly um, and we can see if that helps. So, you know, when you wear a push-up bra and you've got all that cleavage, I just think that's going to be much easier to tattoo than, you know, when they're dropping down low. Um, and besides, if they're dropping down low and you tattoo and then you put a bra on, this is for your cleavage, not your nipples, because I presume you wouldn't show your nipples with a bra on. Um, it, you know, it's going to be a completely different shape. So you want your breast to be the position that your breast is normally in. Or if you're a performer or a dancer like I am, then you would, or fit, I'm not so much of a dancer, am I? I'm a, I'm a dance forward slash fitness instructor. It's a bit slightly different. Um, you know, I would never, I, I would, sh I might show cleavage for some of my routines, especially the burlesque ones, but I wouldn't do it without a bra ever, 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 ever. Well, the world is not ready for that. I'm not ready to show that in a, in a, you know 20 years I won't care but I do care still so um so yeah that's that's basically what's coming up with the tattoo world now I'm using tattoo um machines that I've bought in China because they're budget because I want to review them all so I've got a makeup tattoo biomaster which is or is it biomaser I will go through them all this evening and and talk about them the makeup tattoo is not the makeup tattoo gun is not as good as the um dragon tattoo gun that I bought um but the needles for the dragon have they have a shield over them which stops you going in too deep which is really good but it is difficult to see so we'll have a talk about that later on so I made quite a lot of mistakes because my glasses weren't on weren't strong enough but it didn't matter because I was just sort of sketching. But what I really want to explore with, with this machine, this I do a lot of cross-hatching cross in my ink drawings. And I was thinking, I wonder if I can, you know, do this sort of wispy cro cross-hatching on skin. 
So what we'll do over the weekend is we'll use some faux skin and we'll start using some techniques and having a look at them. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's a learning process for me because obviously I'm a hand poke tattooist by, you know, in, well, primarily, shall we say. So this is all a bit of a learning curve. But I love drawing and I like the fact that I can do my own tattoos very, very much. It's so rewarding. So rewarding. I mean, you really, really are, you know, in charge of your own fate, which is just superb, really superb. So, and <laughs> nothing that I mark my skin is with is despised because I can, you know, I can usually repair a mistake, go over it. And this is the beauty of doing your own, of course. So I'm a real advocate, actually, of DIY tattooing. Um, but also I love the way that hand poke and, and now possibly thin line tattooing looks because it gives this um, very feminine result that looks like lace. And I love that um, a filigree lace effects. You, I haven't seen anybody master that with a tattoo gun. Um, the tattooists that I've used, the their lines are very heavy. All of them. Um, and I guess they do that because it's easier to do a thick line, but also because it, it's going to stay for longer because delicate lines do fade quicker. Um, however, they don't disappear. They just fade a little. And I, I quite like the faded look as well. So, you know, it's really interesting, all these different things that you get. And, of course, different parts of your body do different things you know they they take the ink differently they um they darken differently they hold the ink for longer or shorter depending on which part of your body um heads up feet fade very quickly but i've actually got one that i did on the top of my foot and it has taken pretty well and it's as future perfect and it doesn't really look as if it's fading but we'll have a look at that later but the ones that I did on the side of my foot have really faded um almost to the point actually I did a snake on the side of my foot and parts of it have completely rubbed out it's amazing isn't it um it just kind of doesn't matter it just makes this the snake look a bit shorter um and of course you can go over it at a later date if you want also, I'm finding that hand poking colour, you, if you're hand poking orange or anything flesh tone, it's going to really struggle to show on your skin because your skin is so similar in colour. Um, I'll also be doing a repair job because I, I had a big tank girl tattoo on my thigh and I've already repaired it quite a bit, but I'm going to do some more repairs on it because... The tattooist unfortunately missed loads of bits. He was using flesh colour and there are patches and really bad scarring and patches on the thigh. So I'll be having a look at that. It's it's healed well enough. I think it's almost a year now and it's, um, you know, it, it means I can have a little look at recolouring the thigh because I did buy some flesh colour. I'm loath to use a machine on my thigh because the skin appears to be very tough there. Um, or my skin, should I say, appears to be really slightly leathery, actually. I mean, it's surprising, isn't it? I mean, obviously, the inner thigh is lovely and soft, but this is the top of the thigh, the outer thigh, you know, halfway above the knee and the pelvis area. Seems just to be a, a, a strip of really tough skin. And I've noticed it. I've noticed it when I've been trying to hand poke as well. Um, I've also tried actually, because I learned to microblade eyebrows where the the tattooist uses a blade to cut, to actually cut lines into the eyebrow and then ink pushes the ink in that way. Um, absolutely excruciating. I mean, really, you would not want to do that. I mean, look, if you're in prison and all you have is a razor blade, and you want a tattoo, by all means, give it a go. But very, very painful. Um, was it easy to control? Not really, but I did lettering. 
So you could get away with doing a bit of lettering, but you can't, because of the nature of it, it gets wispier at the end the, with, the, with the microblading blades. And you're taught to wisp out at the ends, and that's what I did. So my lettering was quite wispy. So I guess it would work for fur. If you were doing a, a picture of a dog or a cat, you could use that technique. Um, anyway, I'm all, all about different techniques. I mean, I'm going to try pig teeth eventually um, when I can find a pig tooth to, to do it. And a little hammer, you know, I mean, that's how the... Um, how certain natives, tribal peoples, do it, um, and it works very successfully. So, you know, I'm I'm really up for trying all sorts of things, guys, in my tattoo journey. Um, so yeah, the I did colour a couple of hand pokes in a couple of weeks ago. You'll be able to you can watch all these tattoo videos over on my my Vimeo. That's Vimeo on demand forward slash ice server land. Um, the richness of the colours is much, much less than a machine would do. And if you've already done something in, in black and white with quite a bit of shading, it's it's pretty hard to get any richness of colour there in those areas where you've previously hand-poked, you know, black, black dots. The colour just isn't intense enough. But I did colour a cherry and it worked quite beautifully, actually, um, again, this slightly delicate, or almost faded look, which just looks really feminine and pretty, um, especially from a distance. You know, you're not you you you're curious about what it is rather than, oh yeah, I can see what that is. That's a great big, dirty, huge tattoo. You know, do you see what I'm saying? And um, the other couple of other things that I've tried, my first two tattoos, I went far too deep under the skin with my hand poke and I had a blue tinge all the way around um I I mean there are a couple of things first of all the blue tint didn't didn't look offensive because it was around a, a sprig of ivy so it kind of worked as an illustration um but I had a dog that was looking slightly blue as well um but what I did was I hand poked some white and the hand poke was went very creamy coloured rather than stark white but that's always going to be the case because you just don't get that intensity now I haven't tried a machine and I don't think I'll bother because the the bluish tint has actually gone so you know I don't need to worry about that now um so yeah um in terms of uh mistakes I guess I made a couple when I was first using a line tattoo machine, but the lines were so thin that by the time, because my skin's quite old, by the time, you know, and within a, a couple of months, it's kind of blurry and not very clear. So the mistakes become really nothing too much to worry about. And I did start very, very small. Um, so yeah, I mean, the first uh, tattoo gun that I used, I made, I, I did a flower, um, a sort of squirrely flower, and it, it just looks like some kind of dog. <laughs> it's very small, but I can incorporate that into anything I want, really, at any, any time. So yeah, a bit of a tattoo weekend, I think, um, as I'm waiting for all my photography equipment for the new fitness studio. Remember, I'm doing burlesque fitness, expressive fitness, fusion of um, dance and weight training moves um, every day I've just got to wait for my all my lighting to come so yeah really excited about that um, so take care guys and um, join me over the weekend over on Vimeo or um, on my blogs iserverland.com telltellerclub.com and obviously over on Twitter you can always uh, message me on Twitter if you want to ask any questions about tattooing <laughs>